to 9 or 0. And what we need to do is we need to hit VNAV. And if we do that, you'll notice that an FMC message indicator comes up. And that's telling us that, well, all right, well, there's a problem. So let's go ahead and bring up the FMC. And what's the problem? Well, the problem is that we should be going to flight level 290, but we can't because our altitude setting is set at flight level 150. So let's change our altitude to flight set a uh, flight setting of 290, which is where we need to be going. Okay, and let's go ahead and hit VNAV. And sure enough, our plane is going to pitch up and it's going to start taking us to flight level 290. The other thing that you'll notice is that our speed marker is now set at 315, so we're increasing to our flight uh, level of 290, and we're also increasing our speed because we programmed our speed to be, if we go into the cruise button, our target speed is 0.789 Mach, which is about uh, 315 knots. So there we are. Everything is going smoothly and no problems. Now I accelerated the flight simulator a little bit, and we're just passing uh, flight level 270 on our way to flight level 290. And if we look at our navigational display, you'll notice that right here in the middle, we have a little TC, and that's that just means top of climb. So what the flight management computer is telling us that roughly at this point, we're going to be at a flight level of 290. And this is estimated, and obviously it's, you know, it's, it's it, the FMC is, is not a magic bullet. Uh, this is constantly going to be changing. As you can see, it's kind of wavering, wavering around a little bit. Uh, but as we get close to that point, we're going to be at flight level 290 just as we cross it. And let's take a look. Yeah, sure enough, that's, uh, that's pretty close. We're at 287, and we're going to level off at flight level 290. Now, this is a short flight. So we have a little bit of work to do because just as we're going to be leveling, leveling off at flight level 290, we're going to be starting our descent phase pretty soon. And like I said, I, I chose this route on purpose because it's short and we can cover a lot of material fairly quickly. So let's go ahead and pause the flight simulator here. And let me close this out. And then we're going to bring up our FMC and let's take a look at a couple things. If we look at our route page, I keep going into that. Let's look at our legs page. We're 36 nautical miles away from Daggett and a flight level of 290 and a speed of 0.789 Mach. Well, that's great, except what's going to happen is that in 36 miles, uh, the FMC is going to disconnect because it doesn't know where to go from there because we haven't quite programmed that point in. Uh, as you can see, well, there is, there's, there's Daggett, and then from there it doesn't go anywhere. So let's go ahead and close this up, and let's pull up our charts for Los Angeles. And to do that, we just go back to uh, Aero Planner. Let me just backspace a little bit, and let's put in Los Angeles. I keep saying Los Angeles. McCarran International. Sorry. Okay. Now we need to pick a arrival procedure, which in this case we know from our flight plan is going to be Kepek 1. Let's close that out and let's select which one that's going to be, which is obviously this one. And we're going to bring up a chart. Let me just make this a little smaller. And the approach chart is actually uh, pretty big here, so we have a good amount of programming to do. 
this is something that you would do before you even take off or if you have a longer flight you know you can wait until you're about you know close to your destination point maybe a couple hundred miles away and then you can start planning for your departure but that's why we pause the sim because we kinda need to start planning right now so we're gonna be obviously approaching in this way coming around and you know getting to the airport that way that's obvious so let me just zoom in on this a little bit here and okay well there's Daggett we're 36 miles away and we know that our next point is going to be missing so we need to open up our flight management computer again and we need to put that point in there so since we're already on a route page that's an easy fix um, I any any error message that you get in here if you want to clear it out just hit the clear key it's the easiest way to do it okay missing there we go that's about 12 miles and our next point is going to be clar c l a r yeah c l a r r oops Okay, go ahead and enter that in. And there we are. Okay, and now you do the rest of them by yourself. So now I went ahead and entered all my waypoints from the chart. Uh, yours should look about the same. Remember that once you run out of room, just hit next page and it'll take you to the next page and you can enter your next waypoints and then go to your next page and enter your next waypoints so with all that information entered in you'll notice that over to the right hand side we have some flight level changes taking place because the flight management computer is assuming that this is our endpoint which it is, but in reality it isn't. Our end point is going to be roughly about when we touch the ground, which is not this point. So what it's doing is it's calculating a descent profile for us, which most of the time is pretty accurate. However, we're going to change some things around. So what are we going to change? Well, if we look at our approach chart again, we'll notice that, for instance, Kalar we need to cross at 13,000 feet and about 250 knots. Well, how do we do that? Well, it's pretty simple. Right here is our calculated speed at Klar, which is still our cruising speed and a flight level of 29 or 0, which is way off. We per the chart need to change that and so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna type in let me just move this down we're gonna type in two five yeah that didn't work two five zero slash one three zero and we're going to execute that in and you'll notice that the numbers changed from little numbers to big numbers and that's basically um, the flight management computers way of telling you that these are no longer estimated altitudes these are you know hard altitudes and hard speed restrictions that you need to meet based on what you entered you may run into a situation for instance where you only need to change the speed next to each individual waypoint. Let's say for instance the speed restriction here was 240. Let's say we made a mistake. Well to change that we would just type in 240 into the scratch pad this way and then line execute that in and you'll notice that it changed to 240. That's not what I want though so let me erase it. And then looking at our chart.